It's not what you know, it's who you know. Ever heard that? Well, whether that's fully true or not, it definitely doesn't hurt to become known in the community you want to work in or are working in. In this video, I'm going to show you a really easy way to help the community out in a way that will also gain you a bit of reputation in that community. No, I'm not talking about gaining Stack Overflow or Code Project reputation points, even though those are great options. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make changes to Microsoft's documentation to make it even better. And trust me, this is really easy to do. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Tim Corey, and it's my goal to make learning C Sharp easier. This channel is full of videos explaining the various parts of C Sharp. I also have a website where I provide full courses on C Sharp and SQL. You can check it out at IamTimCorey.com. That's also where you find a blog post for this video. Normally it would contain the source code for this video, but since this video is a bit different, it contains some relevant links and details instead. Okay, let's get started. If you go to docs.microsoft.com, which is where I'm at right now, you'll see really great documentation for a lot of topics. If you ever need information on how to do something in C Sharp, this is a really great place to look. But what if, while you're looking, you find a small bug in an article, maybe a typo or an incorrect phrase or sentence? Well, I'm going to show you what you can do about that. I've already picked out a target article to edit. This article here, How to Debug for Absolute Beginners, has a few issues in it. And today we're going to fix those issues. Now, just to be clear, this is not a rewrite of this article. We're not going to change a whole paragraph of information. That's a different process for editing. Because if you're going to go that far, then you need to also sign an agreement with Microsoft, essentially saying, well, I'm agreeing to these terms. But for this small little tweak, it's not really a big deal. It's, it's a quick thing we can do. And really, as a beginner or as a newer developer, it doesn't really matter. You can still do this because anybody can spot type typo. So I noticed when I was reading through this, I found a typo. There's a lot of text here, so I'm going to go ahead and find it. So if we type height lighting, instead of highlighting, it's height lighting. So that's a typo. So we're going to go ahead and fix that today. But while we're here, we're also going to read through the rest of the article and fix other things that I wouldn't necessarily do an edit for. So for example, there's a few commas that are unnecessary. That's not something I'd do an edit for because it really doesn't detract from the article in any meaningful way. But while I'm here already, I might as well clean up multiple things. So let's go to the top and we're going to hit the edit button. So hit edit and it goes to GitHub. Now, if you're not signed in, it's going to ask you to sign in. But once you're signed into GitHub, and I'm not going to go through the process of creating a GitHub account, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Just go ahead to github.com, sign up, it's free, and then you can make these edits. So what this did, it took me to, and let's go ahead and go back one. I'm going to actually right click and say open a new tab. That way we keep this article open. But what this does, it takes me to the GitHub location for this page. So this page right here is actually stored in open source in GitHub. And this is the location for that specific page. Now what I can do is this little pencil icon here where it says, if I hover over it, it says fork this project and edit the file. Now this is one of those things that often confuses new people to Git and GitHub. The, these terms that aren't really common uh, when you think of fork, usually you think of spoon. Uh, that has nothing to do with spoons. So what a fork is, is I don't have rights to directly change the source code for Microsoft documentation. That'd be silly. I don't have those abilities. However, what I can do since this is open source is I can make a copy of their documentation and make edits on that. That's what a fork is. A fork makes a copy and puts it on your profile and gives you edit access, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to edit it on my copy of their 
code. And then afterwards, I'll do what's called a pull request, which is where I say, hey, this has been changed. In your repository, it should be changed. So all you need to do is bring my code in, overwrite your code, and it will bring those changes in and allow us to uh, essentially merge the two codes and bring my changes into their repository. So I'm making changes eventually to Microsoft's repository code. But for right now, I'm going to do it on my copy. So let's hit fork this repository so you can see it. Sometimes it's easier to see than it is to talk about. Okay, so now I'm editing a project that I don't have right access to. We've created a fork of this project or a copy for you to commit your proposed changes to. Submit a change to this file, we'll write it to a new branch in your fork so you can send a pull request. Lots of fun words there, okay? Fork, commit, repository, branch, pull request. Git has a lot of terminology. I actually have a video on this YouTube channel that's getting started with Git. And we'll go through those and show you the various names and what they mean, how they work. But essentially, I've made a copy and now I'm going to make some changes. I can do that right in the browser. So let's start going through and making changes. The first change I'm going to make is in this paragraph right here on line 22, it says using a debugger effectively is also a skill it takes time and practice to learn, but is ultimately a fundamental task for every software developer. That comma right there is not necessary. Again, I wouldn't make an edit for this normally, but I'm going through and being a good citizen and cleaning up as much as possible while I'm here. Down here, uh, where the exception occurred and can help you investigate possible fixes. Again, that comma is not necessary. Okay, let's keep going. Down here we have, maybe you used the right API, but didn't use it in the right way. Again, that comma is not necessary. Let's keep scrolling down through. If we scroll down here, on line A9, it says, if you don't see these templates, you must install the appropriate workload. But it says these template, not these templates. And see, even reading it, I said these templates. So if you don't see these templates, so it's either this template or these templates. Something like that, plural, since it's referring to more than one template. Okay, if we keep going, we should find that highlighting issue that we saw before. Okay, under debugging the app, it should be under point number two. And there we go right there. Highlighting shouldn't have a T in it. Highlighting, there we go. So that changes, really the, the reason we came into this was the, this typo here, highlighting, which was height lighting. But we're gonna face, of course, all the other little things we find. So we have one more bug to fix and it's right before the summary at the end. So right here, there's no reason for this comma. So we have click in the code for case one, and we can delete that comma. Just be careful, this is Markdown. Now, if you're not familiar with Markdown, essentially what it is, is a, a quick way to create HTML type pages. So for example, this would be header two, H2. The double stars on both sides indicates bold and so on and so forth. So this right here, this single tick backwards, this on both sides, tells the, um, the builder that it is code. And so it, it changes that. Now the problem is, is that they didn't have the tick at the end of case I. And so that was not read properly as code. And instead it was read as just regular text with a tick. So we changed that as well. So those two changes should be all the changes we need. 
We can go here and preview changes if we need to. So this is going to preview, and if we scroll down just to that last one, for example, uh, number 16. Notice it's doing the red strike out of what was not there already, and now it's putting a green around what is there now. And that's correct. It's taken the comma out, and it has removed this, and instead put this in code. So that's it. So that was a pretty quick little edit of our uh, file of that documentation. And now I can do is come down here and give a reason why we are making this change. So we're gonna start out with the, the main reason why I did this. So fix spelling error, minor grammatical, grammatical issues and uh, so you don't want more than 50 characters and other minor issues. Okay, you don't have to put everything in the title. You can put some in the description. So So let's say corrected the spelling on a word, fixed some grammar issues while I was here, and fixed a markdown issue as well. Just being very clear what we do and why we did it. Don't forget that when we submit this, the actual code fixes will be included in this, this uh, message that goes to Microsoft. So you don't have to describe exactly which line numbers you affected and say, I change height, um, height lighting to highlighting, I remove these three. You don't have to say all that because that's all visible in those changes. This is more a description of the over, you know, the, the large picture of what you did and why you did it. So now what we do is we propose file change. So make sure you have a good descriptive um, title and also some clear um, wording as to what you did for your description here. And then you say propose file change. And it's gonna run for a minute. And it says, okay, you're able to merge. What is it gonna do, this merge it is going to bring my forked version back into Microsoft's master version. So it's saying, okay, you're allowed to do this. You're allowed to request the pull request. You're allowed to request that we bring in your code, your code changes into our version. And notice down here, I have, here's all the changes. So there's the changes to this, change out down here, and so on and so forth. There's a templates fix, the height lighting fix, the comma fix, and also the markdown fix. So we're good to go. So now we can do, and it says one commit, one file changed, and one contributor. So we could have more than one file change, we could have more than one person working on this, but in our case, it's very, very simple what we're doing. So we create the pull request. So now what I have here is an open pull request, which I'm gonna hit create in just a minute, but I wanna review it first. So what I did and the, the fuller description of that, and then I just review it one last time to make sure there's nothing else here that I need to look over. It shouldn't be, but the other thing is you can review the contributing guidelines, which we can open that up. And there's some guidelines here on how to contribute to the um, repository, including some very good do's and don'ts. For example, don't surprise us with a big pull request, okay? What that would be is if you wanna create a whole new article or a series of articles, don't write all of that and then just say, hey, here's a new pull request with a whole bunch of new articles. Talk to them first. So use a template for the starting point of your work, and that's if you're building a full new thing. I'm just making a small little tweak. 
So a lot of these aren't as important, but what I've done here is following their, their guidelines. I've created a simple merge request based upon, or pull request based upon small minor edits. So hit create pull request. And now don't worry if you get this, it's going through and processing some changes and it's, it's looking over what needs to be changed. And so it's saying, Hey, don't, don't merge just yet. And it's going to alert somebody. The author has been notified to review your proposed change. It was, it's been sent to the author. So it requires a review and the merge is blocked at this point because it's not yet been reviewed. So you got a lot of red in the screen. Don't panic. Don't think, oh no, I did it all wrong. I should go and hide under a rock now. This is no big deal. It's just saying, hey, we're not gonna allow you to just make some changes whenever you feel like it, we have to approve it first. So this is a step one of the process and you're gonna have to wait because it may be minutes, it may be days, it may be a little bit longer until, in this case, Mike Jones can get to review this and make sure that it is a valid pull request that he wants to allow. Okay. So you've made your work. You've, you've done your work. You've, um, made a, a quick fix. You've said, here's the quick fix. And then they have the option of saying, you know what? I don't like your quick fix. I'm not going to do it. Or I love it. Let's go ahead and just do it automatically or hit that middle ground where they say, you know what? I appreciate your work, but I want you to make some changes first before I approve it. So those are the three different um, things that could be. So for right now, we're going to wait and we'll wait until Mike gets back to us and said, and gives us uh, more information on what he wants to do with this pull request. Okay. Now, just so you see the kind of the other side, once and I'll come back to this video once um, Mike gives us more information so we can have a, a more full view of this process. But I want to show you, this is a request I did earlier where there was a couple of tweaks in this article as well that I want to make. And Isaac got back to me this morning and said, hey, I appreciate it. I've gone ahead and put your changes into the article. As a result, notice under contributors up here at the top, the middle one is Tim Corey. And that even links over to my GitHub profile. Kind of nice. So that's a way you can get your picture associated with an article. That's where you can get your face associated with helping out in the docs process. So that's, it may be a small thing in some ways. I mean, you're just making small little tweaks, but the reality is, is that you're making this a little bit better for everybody else. And that's the thing that, you know, I say over and over again that docs.microsoft.com is a wonderful resource. A big part of the reason why it's a wonderful resource is because the community comes together and makes these changes and makes it better. And you can be a part of that. Now, yes, it would be nice if you could get to a place where you're doing bigger contributions than just little edits. But I tell you what, we all need little edits. And just doing that is helpful. I know for the things that I write, just having somebody else look over it and say, hey, here's three things you need to you know, tweak, that's really helpful and I really appreciate it. So don't think that your small little contribution isn't a big deal. It is. It's definitely helpful. So we're going to come back to this once, once we hear from Mike and we'll continue this video at that point. All right, I'm back. It's been about a day since I finished the first part of this recording. And now I've gotten the email from the, the owner, Mike. And so he has accepted my changes. So let's go ahead and hit refresh here. And we should see now that my change has been uh, set to merge. He removed the do not merge tag. And he said, thanks for the edits and signed off. And my pull request was successfully merged and closed. So what that means is he brought my changes into his repository, said, yep, they look good. 
And so now his repository reflects those changes. And now I can go ahead and close out my end. He's already closed out his end. So the only thing I need to do here is I can delete my branch. And what that does is it gets rid of that little bit of change work I did on my side before I sent it to him. So it's just kind of cleanup process. So let's go ahead and hit the delete branch. And now my branch has been deleted, that patch dash one branch on my repository. Okay, so that's it. So now my, um, my change has been merged. If we go back over here to this page, notice the three contributors, Mike, Genevieve, and Nick. And if we hit refresh, now there's four, and one of them is Tim Corey. So there we go. So there's the change. Uh, we no longer have high lighting uh, or height lighting. We now have highlighting and all the other things as well. So, so there we go. So there's our fixes in place and um, our improvements have been made. So that's all there really is to making a change to Microsoft code. We have, you know, we found a bug in the, in the article. We say, you know what, we can fix this. We went ahead and hit edit and made the change and submit it to the owner of the repository. He looked it over and said, yep, that looks great and merged the changes in. And now I am a contributor to this article. Now, granted, I am a very minor contributor to this article, but at the same time, I've helped somebody else out and just kind of gave him a second uh, set of eyes to look over this article as I read it. So that's just how easy Microsoft has made it to make changes on their documentation. It's not like Wikipedia, where you can just go in and make a change and all of a sudden it's live and you make some kind of goofy change. It actually is reviewed by a real person who owns this particular page. But by making these small changes, you can make the documentation a little better, a little more clear. And if you want to, you can then take this experience and kind of build upon it and start building larger changes for this documentation. Contributing to the community doesn't have to take a long time. It doesn't have to be this massive change. And you don't have to be this master level programmer in order to make a difference. Okay. I'm hoping that after seeing this, that you will, as you're reading this documentation, this documentation, that you will look out for these issues. And if you find something that's a problem, that you'll make a small change. It's kind of like walking through the park and picking up a piece of trash. Is it cleaning up the entire planet? No, but you know what? You are making the world a little bit better place. So go forth and do this. I hope you enjoy this video. And as always, I am Tim Corey.